heard a sermon, was very confused um, from someone else, not you. Basically, the pastor said that Satan put an evil thought into his head. And I guess I was checking to see if, biblically, if Satan has the ability to do that. And can Satan read our thoughts? Oh, you have two questions. Uh, well, no one else is up here, so I thought I'd Okay, no, no. <laughs> Uh, so number one, they said uh, Satan put an evil thought. Number two is the, can Satan read our minds? Okay, uh, let's go to Ephesians because remember, Paul wrote the epistle to the Ephesians because those people in all the Bible, Acts 19 tells us that the people who began coming to Christ from the, the city of Ephesus were heavily into witchcraft, Satanism, magical arts, sorcery, and the whole thing. In fact, after they got saved, Paul had them bring all their incantation books and all their other um, witchcraft gear and burn them. Now, uh, the elders had a special meeting this past week, and we were talking very much about the impact of Satan, the occult, witchcraft, Eastern religions, demons, and all that stuff that's increasingly coming to the world. Because part of the end times is Satan is allowed to exert more and more influence. And God is pulling back giving to the earth what they always wanted. They, he's the God of this world and prince power of the earth. So let's go to Ephesians and let me show you, uh, I'll, I'll give you some insights into uh, what Skip said. Uh, starting with chapter 6, and uh, you all know this. Ephesians 6, um, starting in verse 10, there are a whole bunch of, now remember, the laws of interpretation are that you follow the grammatical, historical, literal um, track. So the first thing you notice about grammar is that every word in the Greek language is precise. And the precise words right here in, in verse 10 are, finally, my brethren, be strong. And, and the, when we're dealing with Satan, and this, this whole thing is about evil thoughts, where we're going to is that he, he uh, gives us the fiery darts. So let's see, we're withstand where are the fiery darts verse 16 so we're headed toward verse 16 but to get ready for what satan can do and skip to answer your questions yes yeah, satan can put in fiery darts into into our spiritual realm which the the spiritual realm by the way is our mind our mind is the the uh, transfer point between the physical world and the spiritual world so this is the this is the communications realm. This is where we pray, this is where we worship, and this is where Satan cannot dwell or, or live. But he can enter these fiery darts. So how do you, how, and I'm not sure what your confusing sermon pastor meant, but if you have ever been sitting and working on your verses and memorizing them and, and have something come across your mind that's about the most vile, horrific, revolting thing that just made you feel ugh, dirty, you have probably just experienced a fiery dart from the devil. It's like, it reminds me of going to the car wash and spending $6 to get the car beautifully clean and for the first time the windshield, I mean, especially if you pay a little more and, you know, someone wipes the inside of your windshield like they do in California at every car wash at when we used to live there. They clean the inside, you know, they, they really do it. And you feel like there's no windshield there and 30 seconds after you leave the car wash, a bird gets you, you know, and it just splats. Now, it didn't get in the car, but it's, it's affected what, what is in my mind and what I'm seeing and everything else, or a bug hits you. That's what Satan can do. So how do you avoid Satan putting fiery darts into our spiritual lives? Because he can, because Paul tells us here, this is how we're going to resist it. Well, look what it says. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So the, the first thing he tells us is that, that we have to make a choice. 
to be strong. Now, if we were doing a little grammatical, historic, literal study, we would notice that the word be is a passive tense. That means I don't do it, it's done to me. Okay, there's also, in the Greek language, uh, there's what's called, I'm sorry, not tense, but voice. There's also the middle voice, and then there's the active voice. The active voice is, I'm doing it. The middle voice is, I'm doing it for myself. And the passive voice is, it's being done to me. And this says, be strong in the Lord. And it's a present, that's the tense. So present, that means right now. Passive, that means it's being done to me, I'm not doing it. And then it's an imperative. And the imperative mood um, means it's a command. So the Lord is not, this is not like, uh, you know, oh, do you want to sit down? It's sit down. See, in English, we don't put endings, we just, our voice. We, we don't say, sit down. We say, sit down. You know, like if you're a teacher and the kids are first graders or while you sit down. This is a command. Be strong in the Lord. Let the Lord strengthen you in the power of his might. And it's not, it's not if you think about it or if you want it. It's right now. Let God strengthen you. And so all it is is me surrendering. So that's the first thing in verse 10. Then look at verse 11. It goes on. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, what's interesting to the, this verse 11 is a little different. In verse 11, it's another imperative, the word put on. But if you look at the grammar, it's an aorist, and it's in the middle. And what it means is for yourself. But it's also an imperative, so it's a command. So you need to, aorist, it's kind of like a, a, an event that has a long-standing impact, but it's in the past. So as a believer, once and for all, for yourself, allow the Lord, look at this, to clothe you with the armor of God, verse 11 says, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Do you know how Satan most influences us? Right here. Where is depression? Uh, where is doubt? Uh, where, where is pride? Does my finger get proud? Mm -mm, my mind does. You understand what I mean? The, the spiritual realm, and, and Satan, notice what it says in verse 11, the wiles of the devil. And then he goes into stuff that we don't think about very much. Frank Peretti did, but most of us don't. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against and now he starts listing what we don't even realize is out there. And if you pay attention, it appears that there is a hierarchy in the spiritual world, both positive and negatively. Among the fallen angels or demons, there are seven levels of them. Look what he calls them. Principalities, powers, rulers. Uh, that word rulers is cosmocrators. Uh, cosmo, cosmos. Crator, kratos, powerful beings. There are cosmocrators out there. Now, you know, all these weird video games, you know, that are with the monsters, they have no idea what a monster looks like. These cosmocraters are these cosmic powers that are so bad, but these cosmocraters of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And all he does there is list off a few of the, of the levels. And so what does he say in verse 13? Because verse 12 says there are all these horrible monsters out there that, that are following the devil's lead to, to neutralize us. You know, it's so interesting. All of us know about hacking, right? In fact, the most recent Mashable article says that probably about 80% of all, well, 100% of all American businesses have been hacked. That I mean, I don't mean ma and pa business that no one's ever heard of. I mean, every, every national level business in America, corporation, has been hacked. They just, what the article says is either they know it and they won't tell anybody or they don't even know it, but everyone has been hacked. We think of hacking and we don't even think what that means. That's what the devil does. The devil hacks our mind. And what is a hack? It's when you don't know it and you're sitting at, 
you know, Starbucks uh, or wherever you are, and you're on their free Wi-Fi, and there's a little guy over there with his little uh, device that he can enter the ports of your computer. And, and while you're merrily with your ports open communicating, he can come in and get whatever he wants. Or they, well, I, I don't want to, I'm not a hacktivist, so I won't even talk about it, but Satan is hacking our minds. And what that is is he can't literally, a hacker doesn't take your computer away, but he robs the control of it and robs information and puts in malicious things and takes out valuable things. Satan's wiles are, he can't get us. We're already sealed, 2 Corinthians 1 says. We are signed, sealed, and ready to be delivered to heaven. We can never lose our salvation. We are impervious to the indwelling of the evil one, like Judas went through. That can't happen to us. He cannot enter us. But he sure can do a lot of very, very malicious work. And so, verse 11 says, put on, I command you, for yourself, you each need to wear your own armor. The middle voice means that you need it for yourself. Your mom's does not count. Your dad's doesn't count. Uh, you know, your, your godly wife or husband or grandparents don't count. You need to put on your own armor. Why? Because of verse 12. But look at verse 13. Take up. There's another one of those imperatives. It's a command. The whole armor of God so that you can withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And so then, as if we didn't get it enough, verse 14, he says it again, another imperative. Stand, therefore. And now he talks about how to not have what Skip's confusing sermon guy said. This, this is how you keep Satan from hacking your thought life. You know, a lot of people don't even know they're hacked. They just don't want to read the Bible. They feel cold. Uh, they feel fearful. God doesn't produce fear. They feel confused. God is not the author of confusion. Where does fear and confusion come from? James 4 says it doesn't come from above. You're not downloading it from heaven. It comes from beneath. James 4 says where there's selfish ambition, confusion, and strife. You are being hacked, it says in James 4. It's coming from beneath, and it's earthly, sensual, and demonic. It's being hacked. See, uh, I would rather, rather than saying that Satan put an evil thought in my mind and blaming everything on Satan, I have left open a port in fact, turn, turn to chapter 4 for a second and look at what it says in, well, it's on the same page in my Bible, Ephesians 4, 27. Neither give place to the devil. Don't leave, don't leave your, your Wi-Fi network unsecured so that everybody can, can get in to your network. Put a code on it. Make it secure. Put a firewall in I have, a, I have a good password. You know, all the stuff you're hearing nowadays. Satan can hack. He can, he can put in malicious operating programs in our minds. And, and a lot of people have these. A lot of people are in this spiral, and they're just spiraling downward because Satan has, Ephesians 4.27, a place in their life. How does he get a place? Verse 25, when people lie, that's like going to a bad website and clicking on all those smiling faces, you know, all those dumb emoticons and everything that people download for free. And they get, why do you think we all get emails from all of you that you don't send? It's because you go to those dumb places and they get into your computer and they start going through your email addresses and sending emails for you that you don't want to send. If you've ever had that happen, that's a physical description of what Satan can do if you get in his... If you click on his link, and you know what one of his links is? Ephesians 4.25. Put away lying. Let each one of you speak truth to his neighbor. Why is lying so bad? John 8.44 says, Your father the devil was a liar from the beginning. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He, he isn't just murderous. He is dishonest. He's a liar and a deceiver. And, and on through, verse 26, another port 
that Satan can hack us through is when we are angry and sin. When, when our anger, the Lord says, don't let anger control you. Just like don't let lying control you. Because if you let anger control you, you've just opened. Uh, a long time ago, in fact, 30 years ago, I went camping in southern China. I was on this trip, and I wanted to experience China because I always wanted to be a missionary there. And uh, I was camping, and it was so uncomfortable because they said, well, you've got to wear this mosquito netting stuff. I mean, everywhere we went, we had mosquito netting, and you just, it was like being in a bubble of mosquito netting. I said, I don't want that. It's cumbersome. They said, you'll want it. And as soon as the sun went down, I mean, they were the size of hummingbirds, their mosquitoes. <laughs> and I was so glad that I had my bubble of, of mosquito netting or I would have had no blood left. You know, that was two months before I married Bonnie. I would have died. It would have been awful. Uh, I would have lost all my blood, and they couldn't have done the blood test, you know, so I could get my marriage license. But, but basically, <laughs> if you're ever in a, in a swampy area, you don't allow holes in your screen of your windows. Have you ever seen people putting cotton balls in the old days? They put cotton balls in all the holes. Why? They didn't want the mosquitoes to come in. You know what it says in Ephesians 4? If you're not careful, verse 27, you'll give place to the devil. If you're angry, it leaves an opening. If, if you're lying, it leaves an opening. If you're stealing, what does the Bible say, Satan, in, in John 10? He didn't come but to kill and what? Steal. Yeah, and destroy. So another avenue for him is loving destroyer video games that are occultic or watching. You know what's the worst thing of all? Watching occultic movies, getting, uh, Bonnie and I went to see something, I can't remember what the movie was, and we go about once a month because people tell us you should go see this, and me, I never want to be late to anything, so I come 15 minutes early, that's bad with movies, because they have 15 minutes of previews, so I decided I would, I would analyze the previews, so I sat there and I watched the first one, and until I had to close my eyes, I decided it was an immoral movie, so I said, that's, that's a bad movie, so I started watching the second one, it was about someone that came back from the dead, and they were helping people. It was like a ghost movie, and I thought, oh, that's an occultic movie. So, you know, and I had to close my eyes on that because it got too scary. Well, the next preview came up, and this was a box that had Hebrew writing on it, and that was exciting to me. I love Hebrew. But all of a sudden, when the box opened, a demon came out and, and did awful stuff, and I had to close my eyes for that one too because knives were poking people. And so I decided, that's an occultic movie. And you know what my little... 15-minute analysis was more than half of all the movies were occultic, and the other half were immoral. That is what opens the door to the devil. And, and then look what happens in verse 30. We grieve the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 4.30, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So what, what should we do? Put away all that stuff. And, and verse 3 of chapter 5, don't let any of that immoral stuff be named among you, and don't be partakers of any of the the evil stuff. So back to chapter 6. So he says, gird yourself with truth in verse 14. So here we go, Skip. The way you don't get those darts is, verse 14, you stand putting on truth. In other words, you only speak the truth. And put on the breastplate of righteousness that's protecting the heart. And I will not think upon and allow into my heart and mind. Now, now remember, for the grammatical historical thing, in their day, the breastplate, this was covering where they felt the seat. They felt that, that what we call the mind was here. The splanchnoi was the center of your feelings and your will and everything and, and all. So the breastplate was covering that. It's protecting the center of your spiritual being. In other words, and, and what are you supposed to protect it with, verse 14? With righteousness. What you say is, do I want to allow, I always say this, parents will do anything to sterilize silverware for their kids. I mean, parents go ballistic about killing germs, but yet they let them sit in front of video games and television and allow the most vile and filthy things of the universe, that spiritual wickedness, into their most delicate part, their mind. Your mouth is not as... as dangerous a place to get something in as your 
center that's supposed to be covered with righteousness, your mind, your breastplate. And then it goes on, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, know you're saved. And here we go. Now, Skip, you know, I knew if I'd talk long enough, I'd answer your question. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And, and to follow up on that, he says, and you need your helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. So basically, when your um, sermon, you heard S Satan put an evil thought, I wouldn't say Satan put an evil thought. I'd say that I got a fiery dart because that, you know, is, it's better to try and use biblical terminology as much as possible. And if you get a fiery dart, you're supposed to, as it says in verse 16, quench the fiery darts. Now, again, the shield of faith, if you study the grammatical historic time, the Roman legionnaires, when they went into battle, they would soak their shields. They would soak them so that when literal fiery arrows were shot at them by the pagans and all the, the hordes that were always attacking them, that the fiery dart would come and it would go in and penetrate their shield, but it would go and it would go out. And you know what faith does? When, when I get a fiery dart and get one of those off-the-wall things that I would never think of and never want to think of, I'd say, Lord, th that is not from you, and that is from the evil one, and I resist, and, and I ask for your cleansing. And you just, by faith, extinguish it so that it doesn't leave an opening to fester through. So that's the first step. Can Satan read our minds? I believe not. I believe not. Now, if you want to read Grudem, you, he has an old chapter on it, Skip. But basically, why I believe Satan can't read our minds is that we are sealed. And, and see, one of the signs of Christ's deity was he could read minds. It says Jesus knew their thoughts. What demons can do is demons can see who we really are. Demons can see past and Satan, our physical bodies, and can see what's inside. And, and so the reason I believe that Satan can't read our minds, but he does have what I would call, um, you know, kind of like this seeing what we really are, because it happens. In Mark chapter 1, a demon walks into the synagogue where Jesus himself, God in human flesh, is speaking, and the demon walked inside of a person, sat down, and all of a sudden when the person looked up and the demon looked up and looked at who was teaching at the synagogue, all of a sudden the demon started screaming. Well, why didn't the demon know from afar? Because it appears that demons cannot penetrate and know what's going on, but if they pay attention, they can see the spiritual operating system. You know, kind of like, are you iOS or are you, you know, um, DOS or whatever. They can see what operating system you are, and they can see whether you're sealed by the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden they see the infinite, eternal God, the Spirit, or they see that you are unprotected, and they can go over and latch in there. And so I believe that the reading of thoughts, because thoughts are our direct link to God, that all Satan can do is, through the screen, poke in there and, and send those fiery darts, but he can't get in there and see what's going on. That's my personal belief. Now, Wayne Grudem, which the systematic theologian, has pages on that where he goes all over the place with it, but after reading him and the Bible so many times, I personally believe Satan can't read our minds, but he can shoot fiery darts. 